We'll do a bad boy style. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm born ready, Skipper. Josh Jones is an absolute overgrown teenager. Fortunately, he's the guy, he's got all the, all the archery info. So today we're gonna, I've been slowly kind of just weeding my way down the rabbit hole. And today we're gonna dig a little deeper, really set my bow up for a competition that we're gonna do together. Let's go set up my bow and make it super accurate, doped, you're holding steadiest, whooping down Josh Jones at a tournament kind of thing. Ready for target. Ready for target. Ready for target. That's the easy way to put it, ready for target with big kid toys. <laughs> The reason I originally picked out this bow was because I knew I was gonna shoot my bow a lot this year. I wanted something that was super fun to shoot and also could convert over towards more of the target side of stuff. That's what we're doing today. We're doing the full conversion basically to go from, I would call it a hunting hybrid bow to as target capable as it is because I wanna do my best at our local shoot coming up. Full conversion today, hunting hybrid bow to target bow. Let's see, let's see how much it helps. It'd be cool. Well, hey, okay. we need we need beverage, don't we? Oh, yeah, we do. Absolutely. There you go, Timmy. Coffee. Oh, Colombia. What do we think about that? Uh, I got them at Costco like a week ago. They're good. Well, let's break down kind of the, yeah. the highlights of how we're going to make this thing dangerous. Well, when going from hunting style setup to target style setup, which is this kind of a crossover bow, so I really wouldn't worry about changing the bow. Personally, I would probably change the side out to something that had clicks and granulated scales. And the main reason I say that is so you can use a program like Archer's Mark. So when you go from one elevation to another elevation or one temperature to another temperature and your bow doesn't shoot the same, you can make easy adjustments to your bow and switch it right back when you get home without having to make big changes. One of the bennies of how I'm set up right now is I should be able to slide this site out and then yeah. slide it back without change, right? Yeah, it's easy. If we mark where you are here, which you already have, you got your silver mark there and your silver mark there, you just take that off, slide something else back in the dovetail and you can put a completely different assembly on here. So I personally think we should not mess with this. I'm gonna go with whatever you think here. We're gonna take that off and then the only other thing we're gonna do is put a longer bar on here so you get a little bit better stability. Your back bar is fine, but we'll put like a 30 inch or 27 inch bar on here so you can get that slower movement because the farther you move the weight away from your hand the slower the image moves and this is like 15 we're going to go to like 27 or 30 somewhere in there well my next bar will he have a beard on the front like this one does uh probably not no because uh, i don't make my stabilizers long there it's hard to get a long stabilizer that doesn't vibrate really bad the carbo flax 500s or 550s from uh excel that just, that just sounds fast it does Car doesn't carbo it flax 500 yeah it does i know right <laughs> um, I, they are is that a race car or is that a stabilizer they are the <laughs> stiffest ones that are small diameter that i felt it's not hard to find find a large diameter stabilizer that's stiff and rigid, mm -hmm. but a small diameter one that's stiff and rigid is kind of hard to come across, and that's the one I've found that seems the stiffest. We're gonna roll with that. And then we're gonna put a different scope head on here that's got magnification, so Timmy can see a little bit closer to the target. We're just gonna give him a two power, though. We don't wanna go jump too far too fast. He is a big child, so we don't wanna go too far. Here's my little, my little Mia here. How you doing, sweet dog? She had a... ACL surgery, or on dog as they call it, CCL, about three weeks ago. You're healing up pretty good. She's laying on her side that got surgery. Yeah, I've never been through surgery with a dog, so it's kind of been, been different. Dogs don't know how to rest, you know? She's back on the up and up, though. All right, so this is the shopping segment. Ultraview, two power lens. That's what we were on right there, UV3. Okay. Yep. We're gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna grab a Carboflax. Um, Carboflax. 6,000. 30, we'll start with that and try that out. That's the 650, that's the 500. Ooh, with this fancy adjustable weight. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think we're looking at like a $350 stabilizer right here. Dang. Yeah, right? I can't figure out why they're so expensive, but they sure feel good. But they all Damn. are, so there's gotta be a reason for it, right? Yeah, I think this is the most expensive one though. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Like I said, it does feel like it has the least amount of vibration, so maybe that's what you're paying for. Can't put a price on putting a whooping on the boys at top pin. <laughs> this little local shoot we're doing, I'm, I'm excited to go shoot it and I'm a little, I haven't shot an actual competition before ever, so I'm a little up in the air on how I want to film it. Let me know what you guys think, what you'd like to see. It's going to be two days, right Josh? Yep, two day deal. Two day deal. We'll Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, let me know what you think. So this whole granulated sight tape deal, mm -hmm. basically running an app to calculate your distances that that app is fluid, so you can you can change it based on conditions and stuff. Exactly. So like, let's say, 
your 20 yard mark on the scale is 10 and your 100 yard mark on the scale is 30 at home. And then you get to where you're going and now all of a sudden your 20 yard mark is still 10 but your uh, 100 yard mark's now 28.5. You literally change two buttons in your phone and it moves all the sight marks for you. A uh, great example when we all went to pack last year, I was the only person who had a granulated sight tape, everybody else had regular stuff and you were all scrambling really hard to try to get your bows recited the night before, I was done reciting my bow in like five minutes, maybe 10. When you change elevations and you change temperature and you change pressure, it changes your impact point at distance. Not so much up close, but far away, it's drastic. And if you can't change it on the fly, you're in trouble, even to see it in a hunting site, because you'll go from 2,000 feet to 8,000 feet. That does not shoot the same. So the higher the elevation you go, typically the flatter your shooting is. Tack in big sky, you're at the top of the mountains, 10,000 feet. We're at what, 2,000 feet here? Mm -hmm. So there's a pretty big difference in your drop. You need to be able to change that on the fly. Mm -hmm. Holy sweet mother of sight mm -hmm. options. Holy bowls. Lots of goodies in there. Decisions there's, need to be made there. There's a lot Timothy. to navigate oh, here. That's a blue one. I'm kind of glad I, uh, right back. I have a Josh Jones. Really glad I have a Josh Jones. Purple, purple. Black. Hey, buddy. All right, guys, I told you that I was going to do something cool for one of you that used my discount code at Josh's website. It's just timc at podiumarcher.com. Gets you 10% off, helps us make better videos. Just helps us make better videos. Helps you save some money. I like it. So I'm gonna start calling people, and the first person that picks up, I'm gonna invite them here to come get my zombie killer bow. Let me get someone to pick up pretty quick. That old man I staring at that screen trying to see it. <laughs> Hello? Tim Weber. Hey. How the hell are you? Doing great. Hey, did you use a discount code at podymarcher.com? Yeah, I thought this was Tim Connor. What's up, <laughs> Hey, there was a clerical error. You saved 10%. I was supposed to charge you 10% more. <laughs> <laughs> Way to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, how are you? Doing good, man. I'm at work right now. I just got back from Phoenix. Here's the thing, Tim. I'm trying to give my phase four to somebody. Oh my god. I just saw phase four when I was down in Phoenix. Do you know what phase four I'm talking about specifically? Want the green string? Yeah, baby. Did the custom thing. Yeah, I watch all you guys' videos, man. I try to make my <laughs> wife watch it with me. <laughs> That's cool. Well, do you want that bow? I love that bow. Man. Can, can you yeah. can you come over here and get it? Just Okay. Yep. Uh, Dan, maybe that's what I'll do for fathers. Kind of up to you. I mean, I would like to give it away in person. That'd be pretty cool and be able to shoot with you a little bit or yeah. help you set it up a little yeah, if we can. to him a little bit. Yeah. I'll get off the line and coordinate with you and uh, we'll get you over here and we'll get you my, my zombie killer bow. How's that? Yeah, that's awesome. That's super cool. That'd be honest. I, I was super bummed when you left elk shape because I was like, oh, is this going to be the end of this? But now we got the podcast. We got whole bunch of good content coming out thank you man i'm excited to to get you that bow it'll be cool well that, that's perfect because i think i used that code for an skb case and i'm going to send my brother one of my uh one of my old bows and that thing so that way he can start shooting too there you go that'll be awesome awesome that's yeah, fantastic forward thank you dude we appreciate you you guys have a good day Okay, take care, take care. First guy picked up. How about that? We'll look forward to meeting him, helping him build it, get it a little tuned up, and maybe shoot against him. So, thank you guys. That's the baby. First thing we're going to do is pull this dowel out because you're shooting an ultra view, and we want to use their head adapter because it integrates better. Make sure I got the right one here before I start working. Yep, perfect. Oh, you got to disassemble this end and take it out. You can get at the attachment hole. That uncovers your access to here. Pull this screw out. That locks into there. And then your screw through here is what tightens it up. It's like that. Mm -hmm. So hold your finger over it, spin it in as far as you can until it starts to touch, and then line it up. Allen wrench. It's a really clean system, honestly. Give it a reef. It's like that. And then we can pick a lens. Yeah, we're baby burdening you here. Yeah. So it's got a drilled hole in it. Yeah. So we're going to put a fiber through it. That's what Chris B said he likes. And then all you're really doing, you don't need a whole bunch of it because you have the light kit. So you put it through the hole and then get a lighter here. Ball up one end just a little bit. Doesn't need to be a lot, just enough that you can't pull it back through the hole. Fiber optic shrinks up real quick. We can't pull it back through. So you leave a little sticking out. Cut it over there so I don't lose it. A little burny burny on both ends? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm trying not to get right on it. 
There you go. A little tag end. So well, what, what power scope will here. you be running? Probably a four, like that. I'm used to them, though, so it wouldn't change you out right away. I'll find out today or tomorrow when I actually start messing with that stuff. So we're just popping a gasket out. Lands, and a little gasket back on top. Mm-hmm. And the insert goes back in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yo, -hmm. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Glow and dot. Ooh, son. How could you miss with something that nice? Well, one would assume <laughs> that you should be able to co make contact with that, what have you. But personally, I would probably just shoot the fiber. No, I'll shoot the fiber, but I just wanted to show these off for people that wanted to mm -hmm. get a look at them. Yeah, comes with all of that. It also comes with different colors of bubbles, too. You can turn it up or down. And then you can turn the, uh, the bubble uh, light off, too. Yeah. David taught me that if you want to conserve battery. That's like the only thing I found on these that's, you know, the battery life. If you're shooting them a lot. Battery life is a little sucky. Yeah. But the engineering is pretty sick. No, it's a, it's a well thought out product, just not maybe on the electrical side. Get in the bow and then get a level on it. Let's do it. That's the other nice thing. If you have like sight tapes like that, you could change them out. Get somewhere in a pinch as long as you have the ones around them mm -hmm. to change it a little bit. But the electronic version is just so freaking simple. It's kind of hard not to use it. If you're going to shoot target, it's a must. You don't. You don't find it's competitive not, shooters that aren't using it. It's not a should, it's a must. And the thing about Excel is they do cost a good good chunk, but their stuff is always really nice, man. Yeah, you get what you pay for. You yeah. really do. I mean, they're, I think there's more expensive sites out there. I think Shibuya is more expensive, but man, they're just, they do a really good job with their products. And we run it at the top for any reason? Yeah, maximum range. Max range. And I've rarely seen the, the correct built setup that it needs to be higher to start with. Mm -hmm. Full drop here is going to maximize what you're going to do. Oh, there we go. Shoot a boop, boop, boop. There we go. Get our Gen 2 on the rail. Not quite perfect, but close. Kind of loosen the bottom screw and have a little bit of play. Mm-hmm. Well, you get more if you loosen both of them, but if you can keep it by just moving one, it's a lot easier to get it to tighten down and stay put. That good. And then you're just looking at the scope head there, and it needs a little bit of love. It's a tiny bit off. I, once again, I usually just try to move, loosen one, yeah. push it around a little bit, and see if I can get it to move much. So that's good. Ooh. That looks good. Level, 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 level. Level everywhere. Now we need a third. You know how we do that. Oh, yeah. To the third station. Wiggle, 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 yeah. <laughs> prototype. Prototype, yeah, that's right. Gen 2 prototype. Hasn't made it to the line yet. We'll go there. It's still flat. Pretty damn good. I'm close from my angle, dude. You're going to need a stubby to do that. Go short. You know what to say about long stage? Compensating for something. God, I can't wait to actually show up this time and be the only person who's not in line waiting for the gondola with a short stabilizer. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt like uh, I was just a little out of place, you know? Yeah, top pin will have a lot of long stabilizers. A lot of long stabilizers. A lot stabilizers. of long stabilizers. Go. So tell me about, what do you say, this is adjustable? Uh, yeah, you can actually move that forward or backward oh. based off of balance and vibration point. That's cool. Yeah, it's a neat little addition they made. A little function. That, where did I... A little feature function. What mount do we have on the front here? This is the podium 10 degree down angle. Podium 10 degree down. Quick disconnect. Made by moi. Dude. Holy sweet mother of stabilizers. Look at all this goodness. Well, Tim? God, I can't wait to show up and shoot against Drew with that. I think you're out of excuses now. <laughs> That's the idea. I, I can't give you another left. advantage. This is all the advantages you can get, buddy. I want nothing left. <laughs> this is nothing left. <laughs> Unless All you right. have somebody shoot it for you, there is that. So that's pretty much the conversion, right? That's it, man. You're ready for target. Wow. Yeah. Now just job. download Archer's Mark and put in some data. You did that quite quickly. Yeah, you know. Guys, Josh has a like YouTube a channel. Bike. He's a YouTube channel where he does this stuff all the time. So go give him a sub go give him a tap I got, tap. I got a sub or two. Give him a little tap tap. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> mark number two. Just trying to get my second mark here real quick. I'm gonna do 70. So take a guess, I'm at 26. You want straight for 70? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, uh, wait, what do you, number are you on there? 26. I'm thinking. It's gonna be like 50 something. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking 62. Oh yeah, I'm going in the way now.
<laughs> so probably in the 50s somewhere. Oh, I went straight to 62. Yeah, let's try 55. You know, kind of what I did. I'm a good guesser, Tim. That would have been too easy. Uh, I agree. That was close. I spent the rest of the afternoon establishing my marks to get a new generated sight tape from Archer's Mark. Despite what the shotgun spray pattern of arrows look like, I'm sliding my sight up and down to figure out what my new elevation is from 70 yards. I'm excited about the potential for Archer's Mark and accuracy and just this kind of whole target rabbit hole. I'm gonna wrap the episode here. Let me know if you thought this stuff was interesting. I learned a lot today. Subscribe to the channel. I'm cranking up that road to 100,000 subscribers. It helps me out more than you know. And uh, I will catch you back here for the next one. We'll do a bad boy style. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm born ready, Skippy. I'm going right. Josh Jones is an absolute overground. What'd you do? <laughs> I think I just hit the button and it, oh, oh jammed. You jammed in the brake? Take so two. Horn.